Okay, so any long-term followers of this channel should know by now that I am no fan of Harry Styles. Uh, kind of misogynistic. No one who's a fan of this show should be also a fan of Harry Styles. They, they should not intersect. Our two fan bases should not intersect. The Stylers, as they're called, Harry's fans, and uh, and uh, what what what's your name? Oh, that's right. I haven't given you, my fans, a name. Do you know why? Because giving your fans a name is completely gay. Just before we get into the video, please don't leave any comments going on about my use of the word gay. I was brought up in Northern England, as I've said many times before, and the word gay means lame, all right? So I don't care, that's the hill I'm gonna die on, that big gay hill. Oh, and to any of you who want to say anything about the fact that I need a haircut, I'm going tomorrow morning, all right? And no, I haven't had a shave this morning either. If you don't want to see a disheveled looking 30 something year old screaming about gays on YouTube, then this isn't the channel for you. All right, Daniel, calm down. You're being a little bit too edgy today. You're going to alienate people. And that's the last thing you want to do. Okay, so I'm going to try to be measured in my constructive criticism of Harry Styles today. You? You? Uh, what did I just watch? You? You? Now, I already disliked Harry's personality from watching him in interviews, but now I've seen his onstage alter ego, which is like the manager from When the Whistle Blows in Extras, am I right? Are you having a laugh? Is she having a laugh? You? You? Yeah, like a bloody pantomime character. <laughs> Bye. He's behind you. Oh, no, he isn't. It's a difficult night. That's okay. What is it? Lorraine. No, Lorraine is fine. That's Lorraine. I mean, it's not that difficult in English. I know most of us are terrible. We don't have good accents, but we can handle Lorraine. Wow, look at him work that crowd, eh? Like a young Adolf Hitler. So this is just another string to Harry's bow. Uh, actor, singer, and now observational comedian. Make some noise for Lorraine, everybody! <laughs> Lauren! No, Lorraine. You are Lorraine. Okay. It's your birthday today, is it? Tonight. <laughs> I don't think that's how birthdays work. See, what you're seeing here is Harry in his comfort zone. When you watch him in interviews, he's not in his comfort zone because he has nothing to say. There's no, there's no internal dialogue going on up there, okay? He has nothing to say. He doesn't know anything about the way his music is made or why he's wearing dresses. It's because Gucci told him to. It's because his managers wrote the songs. They hired some people to write the songs for him. That's, he doesn't know the mechanics of how it works. But when he's on stage, that's where you see Harry Styles' true calling. He should have been a holiday rep at a family resort in Tenerife. It must be so confusing to be Harry Styles. Because on the one hand, you've got this narrative being spun all around you all the time about being so artistic and uh, I don't know like uh, fluid with your sexuality and stuff like that he's not he's banging some of the hottest women in the world <laughs> when he was a teenager he had 30 something year old presenters and models throwing themselves at him in a desperate attempt to remain relevant and yet at the same time he had to play the role of this sort of innocent happy-go-lucky guy who doesn't know what's going on, and that has, over time, become his actual personality. The persona he had to play is now his only, the only remnant of himself. There is no internal, there's nothing there, he's a husk. Except when he's on stage, eh? For a couple of hours under those bright lights in front of his adoring, unquestionably loyal, brain-dead fans, he can forget that he's the product, Harry Styles. Right, And you can forget that his persona is supposed to be this naive little cuttlefish who just loves women until he gets to within striking distance with his penis and <laughs> shags the hottest women in the world. Right, He can forget that that's his personality and he can be his true calling. Darren the club rep. He's no longer Harry Styles, he's Darren the club rep from... 
Club Tropicana holidays. Loren, it's your birthday, Loren. Lauren, more like. It's her birthday. Get her a, get her a Sambuca on, Darren, eh? On me. Hey, do you want me to stamp your hand? You can get a cue jump. Just say you're with Darren. Darren from Club Tropicana Holidays. They'll let you in. Actually, never mind. You are Lauren. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. You mean at midnight? It's your birthday. Oh, okay, wonderful. How old do you turn? Um, are you okay? <laughs> 27. Okay, great. How was 26? Great. It's fine. Any drinks for 27? Any big drinks? Any big drinks? What are you going to do in the year? Uh... Oh my god, what is wrong with these women? She's 27 and she's getting all flustered with Harry Styles. You know, she said something inappropriate to him there, like she wanted to sleep with him, probably. Something that scandalous. Oh, how scandalous, Lauren. Scandalous, Lauren! He's still in his pantomime persona. <laughs> she said that. She's 27. You know, the women who were passing out at Elvis Presley concerts back in the 50s and 60s, they were 15! Get a grip, Lauren! No woman over the age of, uh 19 should find Harry Styles attractive. I reckon it's all the birth control pills. They're all on birth control. That's the thing. And that's why they find these little inoffensive cuddly fish men attractive. Ooh, well, he won't get me pregnant. There. Uh, brain is telling them. Well, that's where you're wrong, women's brains. He's got a fully functioning set of genitalia that Harry Styles has, and he ain't afraid to use it. It's not your birthday yet. <laughs> Ooh, cheeky Loren. The night is young and so am I. Play your cards right, you never know. You're nearly 30, both of you, for God's sake. Go and find God like Justin Bieber did. Or is it? <laughs> Family show, you know. Gotta keep it clean. This is a family show. Keep it clean, Loren, eh? <laughs> this is a family resort, you know, eh? What's she like, old Lauren? I'm gonna find out later. Anyway, in other news, I got a little bit excited last night. I got very excited, in fact, because uh, I saw I got a little mention on Red Bar. Should we um, save the other ones for next week? No, 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 no. Daniel, who who are these? These should be short. I'll I'll, I'll go a little faster. Who's Daniel Boland? Definitely massive. Oh, Daniel Boland. This is a heavy hitter. Do you guys know who this is? I do not. Eighty-two point eight k subscribers. This is no joke. This was a very surreal experience last night. I thought I actually thought, <laughs> and I know this sounds like a giddy fan girl. I sound like. Uh, a girl on birth control at a Harry Styles concert. But I actually did wonder if I was dreaming because I've been watching a lot of Red Bar recently and uh, to hear my name mentioned by Mike David and then the explosion sound effect, that was just... That was very special. Very special to me. <laughs> what time? 11.20. Here he is, 11.20. Let's see what he says about Red Bar. ...really influenced this world-famous comedian, didn't I? Uh, you know, anyway, I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't really care. It's no biggie, you know? I guess I'm inspiring lots of world-famous comedians. Uh, who, who can I take down next as on my quest to become the more mainstream, slightly safer version of Mike David from Red Bar Radio, right? Yeah, that's that's where I'm headed. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments and take a I look at my videos on Eladia. This see what is amazing. He is uh, on his way to become a version of me. That's what everyone should strive for. That's to. amazing. A guy like that, I thought I was watching. Uh, uh, it's, it's a big series on Netflix. Yorkas is what comes to mind. What is it called? Orcas. The Ozarks, yes. To me, it's like I'm watching the Ozarks here with this guy. A, this is like if I was watching the Ozarks and they were into Red Bar. So, He's thank British. you very much. He's very British. <laughs> yes, thank you. So that was nice, but um, I'm no fool. I know that that doesn't mean I've made it just because Red Bar mentioned me, okay? 
My mark of success is uh, when Mike David does a takedown video. You know, he dedicates an hour and a half of his seven-hour shows uh, to telling you you're a complete and utter cook, right? I'll, I'll, t I'll give you an idea. Look up uh, Red Bar's analysis, if you want to call it that, of Jim Brewer's appearance on Joe Rogan recently. That... <laughs> That is when you know you've made it, when uh, when you no longer want to live because <laughs> because Red Bar despises you so much. That is when I'll know I've made it. Okay, and until then, or until I get my uh, hundred thousand subscriber plaque, I'm still a nobody. Okay, so. Keep liking and sharing and subscribing and all the rest of it and all the other things. And, um, I don't know, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.